I'm Ashley. I'm Jen. And I'm Sarah. And we are Unabridged, the podcast where teachers take on books. Join us each week for bookish episodes and check out our website, unabridgedpod.com, where you can find lots of new bookish content every week. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Unabridged Pod and message us there or see our website to get plugged into the Unabridged community. You want opinions about books? We've got them. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 213, Looking Forward to 2022. We are going to let you know some books that we are excited to read that are coming out in 2022. Before we get started, we wanted to remind you that we now have an events page on our website. You can access that at www.unabridgepod.com slash events. And we are hosting all kinds of different things throughout the year. So check that page regularly to see what's coming up and what you can get involved in because we have had so much fun these last few months of 2021 doing some really awesome events with our listeners. So it's been so much fun. So we have lots planned for 2022 as well. Before we get on to our main discussion, let's start how we always do with our bookish check-in. Jen, what are you reading? So I am reading Sarah Adams is the Enemy. This is the second in her It Happened in Charleston series. This one is about June and Ryan. So they went to high school together and there was definitely attraction there, but it resulted in them being enemies instead of friends. And they were both in denial about their attraction on some level. And then they each graduated from high school and now it's been 12 years and they haven't really seen each other since, even though they have mutual friends who are a couple. Well, now those mutual friends are getting married. And so, of course, you can see where this is going. June and Ryan are the maid of honor and the best man, respectively. And so they're thrown back together. And... It's really sweet. So, you know, I love the enemies to lovers trope. It's really fun, but it's also a really sweet book. So June had been engaged, I think five years back and she had to end the engagement because she discovered that the guy was cheating on her. And in the process of breaking it off, he basically told her that he did not find her attractive anymore. So she used to be really confident And she, that was a real blow to her confidence. And so she, after that made a date that she would only have one date with any guy because she didn't want to be vulnerable enough. You know, with the second date, she felt there was an attachment building and that that would make her vulnerable. And she just didn't want to put herself out there. So when Ryan returns, he finds that June has started her own successful donut shop. I feel like I've been reading a lot of donut related content lately. And June finds out that Ryan is a Michelin starred chef. So each of them is in the food industry, which results in some fun little stuff in the kitchen. Yeah. But anyway, so Sarah Adams, I think is great at building character. She's great at building this sense of place in Charleston. There is a connection to the previous book in the series, which I really enjoyed. And yeah, it's just a really fun read so far. I've, it, this is my third book by Adams and they're just great mood lifters and I, I'm in need of that right now. So it's been a perfect read. So yeah, that is Sarah Adams's The Enemy. That sounds really good. That yeah. seems uh, like something I would love. I was going to say, I think you would absolutely love it, Sarah. Yeah, I think it's right <laughs> up your alley. That's awesome. Ashley, what are you reading? So I had one listed, but I am totally going to switch here. <laughs> <laughs> I, like always, am reading way too many books at once. The one I've been reading that I have absolutely been loving and definitely have been, you know, hurrying to my Kindle to read is Uzma Jalaluddin's Aisha at Last. And I think Jen shared this Uh before. (laughs) So I feel like it was one that I found on a Kindle deal after hearing Jen talk about it. But it's been a while and it was just sitting there and I started it recently. And yeah, it's definitely the one that I'm like returning to keep reading amid my giant <laughs> <laughs> giant stack. That's the one I really um, want to find out what happens next. But this one is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. And it is I just really love it. It's a great story. I love the two main characters. Khalid is a very traditional Muslim and he is having 
right away in the story, I mean, part of what grabbed me was that he's having this really pronounced conflict at work that is entirely driven by a horrendous boss who is very narrow minded and who is, they call her Sheila the shark. And she's just like always out to fire people basically. And she is off put in the very beginning because he doesn't want to shake her hand. And so it's like from that momentary interaction, she has all this prejudice and is using that to try to come up with kind of a legitimate way to get rid of him. So I think I was really gripped by that. So this is definitely a romance story, but I really loved how that opening scene is very much about him in the workplace and his life and navigating that. And it goes, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it goes in some really like fun and interesting ways as far as like she does these things that she's trying to kind of sabotage him, but then unexpectedly like really interesting things that I guess this is a tiny spoiler, but it involves women's lingerie. And so she's kind of plotting against him, but it goes in this like really positive direction. So I love kind of seeing him not that I want him to go through those things. I just think I appreciate watching him as a character navigate that. He wears very traditional dress. And so she's critical of his clothing. She's critical of his beard. She's just very judgmental, but she's also like trying to work the system and find a way to, you know, be hurtful to him. And so I appreciate seeing how he is trying to figure out kind of what to do there and work through that moral quandary of like, you know, what do I give up in myself? Do I have to make any changes or can I be true to who I am and, you know, navigate the situation? So that happens right away. But then we also have Aisha and she is a great character as well. And she is struggling to find her way. She is an amazing writer. She's a poet, but she feels like that's not a viable career. And so she's trying to figure out what to do and she's currently substitute teaching. And so I certainly appreciate a lot of the experiences that she has trying to navigate the classroom and dealing with teenagers and all of that. <laughs> so, so those things are happening. And then there's also a matchmaking kind of thing happening. There's both there's a friend who knows both of them who is Aisha's best friend. And that is one of the story lines that I love the best too. Mm -hmm. And so far is like Clara is the friend. Clara and Aisha are just like such amazing characters together and they have this really great friendship. And so I love that, but she's doing a bit of matchmaking. <laughs> and then there's also formal matchmaking. Khalid is expecting his mom to arrange rickshaws for him and to have he wants an arranged marriage. He's expecting to, you know, meet a series of women and to then be placed in an arranged marriage with somebody that his mom approves of, but that he's also excited to marry. And he really has that mindset that love comes with marriage and that through a good marriage, he will find love and romance. And things go awry and, <laughs> and, kind of move from there. But I mean, I love it. I am just, it's a great story. And like I said, I think part of it is just that I really love both the characters, but then it does have some, some pretty commonly used tropes that I think come up in really interesting ways in the book. And so I love that. And I think that I kind of remember you saying this, Jen, when you talked about it, but like it is a retelling, but it also very much stands alone as its own story. And so I like that too, that there's these kind of touchstones on the original Pride and Prejudice, but it's also very much its own story. So I, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm not quite finished, but very close. And I wanted to share that one because I was thinking of my long list of books. That one is one I've really been gravitating back to and just really have loved. So that's Uzma Jalaluddin's Aisha at Last. I want to read that. I I remember when Jen talked about it, I wanted, I was like, oh, I want to read that. And now that you've talked about it, yes. I, I Still want to read it. <laughs> yeah, you will it's definitely so good. love it, Sarah. I mean, it's just so good. And I think it's what you is what I know all three of us enjoy in a romance that there's a lot of substance beyond just the romance, but there's also this really great central romance playing out as well. And yeah, it's really fun. The sequel to it, I have not read it yet, but it does have a sequel. I can't remember who it focuses on. Yeah, it would be worth checking into. So oh, cool. it's on my I list. So I just haven't gotten to it yet. Awesome. So, yeah. I will look for that. What about you, Sarah? What are you reading? So I am reading Mistletoe and Mr. Wright by Sarah Morgenthaler. Oh, yeah. And I know that you all have read this one. 
And um, this is the book two in the Moose Springs, Alaska series. And I read the tourist attraction a while back and I just really loved it. But I kind of saved Mistletoe and Mr. Wright for the holiday season. And then the holiday season got a very hectic. So I'm just <laughs> finishing it up here in the very beginning of January, but it is such a delight. I think I like it even more than the tourist attraction. So this story is about Lana, who is a very wealthy woman who ha whose family has kind of bought a lot of property in Moose Springs, Alaska, which is this tiny town full of really interesting people. And they do not like Lana because she has purchased all that her family has purchased all this property in their town and they're going to build these high-rise condos and all that but there's a local pool hall owner who is divorced and his name is rick and they meet that well they have met but then they they start to have this attraction toward each other and they agree to have a holiday fling and it is just so precious. And I remember when Ashley was talking about it uh, and she was talking about the animals. And I just want you to know that never have I wanted a hedgehog that I could dress up <laughs> in a little outfit so badly as I do when I li so listen, listen to this book because it's just so precious. And like, and I love Rick because he is, you know, he's single. He is caring for his wife's nephew and he just loves him like his own and he's and the the nephew is in his late teens and so he's very like he's got an attitude and rick is just so loving but they have this like myriad of animals that they dress up and that run the house it's just so precious so i think it is a great holiday read even if it's a little after the holidays it's feel good if that's what i need right now and it's just like curling up with a warm hug you know it's just it's just a sweet book and i just love all the little animals and all of that so i highly recommend this series and i'm once i get through this i'm definitely going to read the la the last one that has come out i don't know if she's going to do any more but i think it's only going to be three and so I'll be reading the next one. So it's very good. So that's Mistletoe and Mr. Wright by Sarah Morgenthaler. That's such a fun one. <laughs> oh, love it. Yes. And I am I absolutely agree about the hedgehog. I had never thought about a hedgehog as a pet, but that book makes it seem very desirable. This is an interesting fact. And my sister, when she was in high school, her her high school boyfriend had a hedgehog for a pet. So he did come to our house. Never did I think that I would desire one, even after having met that hedgehog. But <laughs> the next hedgehog that he dresses up and calls Darla, I definitely would like a Darla in my life. So. <laughs> okay, we are going to get on with the main discussion part of our of the episode today. Today we are going to just talk about briefly, because we have not read these yet, briefly about two books that we are excited to get our hands on during 2022. And I am going to have Ashley start us off. So I felt really intimidated. I don't know if this happened to you both, but I just was like, oh my gosh, how did I do this before where I only choose a couple of books for an entire year to say when there are so many books coming out that I'm excited to read. But I found that what was pulling my attention were sequels and books I had already read. I was excited to see the sequel come out. So that's what I'm going to share ultimately is just a couple of sequels that are coming out that I'm really excited about. But I did notice that, that even though, I mean, when we do our pub day shout outs, there's, I mean, every week there's awesome books coming out that I can't wait to read, but I'm always looking for authors I already love and am excited to read. And then also books that are continuing a series. So we've talked before about pros and cons of series. And I mean, it is hard to keep up with them, but that's definitely what I, when I was looking at all the ones that I, you know, scanning through the covers and looking at lists for 2022, that's what caught my attention. So one that I cannot wait to read is B.B. Alston's Amari and the Great Game. So I read not, not that far back in 2021, I read B.B. Alston's Amari and the Night Brothers. And I I feel like I have only on the podcast raved a little bit about just how much <laughs> I loved that book, but I just absolutely love that book. So this is middle grade. Amari is a phenomenal character. I love that it is a fantasy book that is set in, you know, she goes to a school where she's learning with other students. The world is not as we all see it to be, but instead it has all these other parts that 
are carefully concealed. And so she's getting to see kind of behind the curtain as it were and learning about that. But she also has magic. Like she has mad, she is a magical person and that is really frowned upon in their society. So even though a lot of them have elevated talents, those are not like innately born. And so because of that, she's really treated as an outsider. She also comes from low income housing. She finds that even in this other setting that a lot of the other people in the school are privileged. They have a lot of money. They are often legacy kids. So they're coming from families who are already part of the system. So I just thought all of that was really well built. And she is a phenomenal character. She has a great friend. And so I just loved it. I thought it was a really great book and I cannot wait to see how the series continues. I think she has a lot of motivation to keep going. Her brother is missing in the beginning as part of how all of this gets going. So he's much older. And then as she's trying to figure out what happened, she uncovers all of this about the school and, and this training and all of that. So yeah, I'm really excited about that one. That's B.B. Austin's Amari and the Great Game, and it's coming out on April 5th. Another sequel that caught my attention is Alexis Hall's Husband Material. <laughs> this one is coming out in August. This is another one that I feel like the amount that I loved Boyfriend Material was astronomical and I raved about it a little bit on here, but maybe haven't said <laughs> enough how much I loved it, but it just brought me a lot of joy. I think that there are a few romances that really were my gateway into reading and enjoying romances and boyfriend material was definitely one of those for me. And so I just, I loved it and it brought me a lot of joy and I really loved the characters. So I'm looking forward to getting back to them and seeing kind of what's what their next chapter is in their world. So that one's Alexis Hall's husband material and it's coming out August 2nd. Oh, yay. I love boyfriend material. That one is still on my TBR, but I just want to, I want to listen to it because I know Ashley said it was so good. And I, so I've been kind of holding it in my pocket because I know that it's like funny and it's just mm -hmm. really like really good that you all liked it so much. So I've been holding it in my pocket for like the time when I just really need something like that. Yes. Yeah. It is, I mean, I just thought it, it's the things that we've talked about before that like the friend group is great. I think Luke, one of the main characters, he is a really complicated character. And I think that while it all, it still feels like a really comforting read, I thought that I related a lot to like his struggles as a character. He's not just like, everything's fine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so I appreciated that. But like, there were a lot of times where I felt like you could see that you knew he was doing the wrong thing, but you also could really relate to him as a, as a complicated person. So I loved all of that. So. Yeah. Oh, and I really want to read the B.B. Alston series. You know, I love it. Well, I'm getting ready to talk about a fantasy series. So yeah, say, <laughs> you all will both love it. And I just can't, I mean, not only do I love it, but I'm just so excited that it's out there for kids. And I think we can't mm -hmm. talk enough about it because I just think it is one that for sure would reach a wide range of students. It's great as like an accessible read that is mm -hmm. fantasy, that they don't have to be like really grounded in reading a lot of fantasy to be able to access it. But like, it's just a great, it's a great, great story. And I can't wait to get back to it. Yeah, you will both love it for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Jen, what are your picks? I, I envision Jen like, like stressing out big time over this. <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if she had like a sweet 16, you know, <laughs> I had, down the I had some trouble. I did have some trouble. I only wrote four things on the document. I'm so I so felt proud. like that was already quite restrained. So, you know, <laughs> so yeah, my two are not going to be a surprise to anyone. I don't think. So the first one is Emily Henry's book lovers. And that one is coming out in May. I have just become such a fan of Emily Henry's work. I've been happy to dive into her YA books, but I think her adult romances have, she's had two so far, have just been excellent. But Book Lovers reminds me a lot of Beach Read, which is my favorite of her books still. And that. that one just focused on two writers. I just loved the the relationship there, but I also love the fact that, of course, they were always thinking about writing. And so that was really a lot of fun to read about. And Book Lovers sounds like it's going to be in that same vein. So it is about a literary agent and an editor. And so I feel like we're diving back into the same world of people who love words, people who love books. 
But of course, I'm looking forward to the romance as well. So that again is Emily Henry's Book Lovers coming out in May. And then the other one is a sequel. So this one is Tracy Dion's Bloodmarked, which is the sequel to Legend Born, which I read in January 2021. And it blew me away. I loved it so much, but I was also sad because because I knew I would have to wait for a while for the sequel. But it that book, so it is kind of a retelling of Arthurian legend. It focuses on a character named Bree, who is in high school, but has an opportunity to start a college program while she's still in high school. And the reason she chooses to do that is because her mother died a really sudden and tragic death. She had an accident. But since it happened, Brie has had this weird feeling that there was more to it than she has been told and more to it than she remembers. So when she goes to college at UNC Chapel Hill, number one, she is dealing with some issues of race. So she is black. And one of her very first experiences there, she feels as if she has been targeted because of her race. And throughout the book, Dion does an amazing job of looking at issues of equity at this college. And then there's this whole magical component that I don't want to give away because the way it unfolds is so original. But I love Arthurian legends, but I thought what this did with with that retelling was fascinating. And then there's also this Southern history that gets woven into the storyline and is very much a part of Bree's heritage. So it just did a huge number of things really, really well. And I cannot wait to read Bloodmarked. So that is Tracy Dion's Bloodmarked. And that one is coming out in July. And I cannot wait. I have been waiting to read Legendborn <laughs> until a little bit closer to time. But kind of like you were saying, Sarah, about holding it in my pocket. Like it is one that I know I'm going to love. I know I'm going to re want to read the sequel. And so I've kind of been waiting, but it's also been, yeah, I am anticipating it because I know how much you loved it, Jen, and some other people whose, you know, opinions I always love the things that they like absolutely love and highly recommend. And certainly Legend Form is like that. So yeah, I'm excited to read this. I'm finding with the fantasy series, I'm like, I'm going to wait till they all come out. Because uh -huh. I want to hear, but then when after they're all out, I feel very overwhelmed by how daunting. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's, yeah. Because I a great love point, fantasy. Sarah. I yeah. love it's fantasy. Like, it's intimidating. But yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that there have been more. I, I'm not sure I should say how many books there will be in this series, but I do feel like there's been a move toward more duologies. And I think that is really nice because it does allow you to have the depth of world building and of character building that you have in more than one book, but it's not, I mean, there are some, some series that I love, but they have like eight and nine books in yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. So these that's, days that's, that's just so intimidating, but you're right that like, it's also, yeah, I can think of a couple where I read two of them back to back and then waited for the third to come out and then I lost my traction. So you're right, Sarah, there's kind of like that balance between it's hard to find the balance. It's hard sometimes. to know which is better, which is the better choice for a given series. And I agree about the duology because I love the joy mm -hmm. of revisiting a series. But if it's too much, then it's really intimidating. And then I can't remember who all the people are. And then I get really frustrated that I am like, oh, I need to go back and reread the first book. And then once once I'm in that realm, it's usually like I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just yeah. it feels like too much to try to do that. So yeah. So hard. All right, Sarah, what are you looking forward to? I kind of struggled with this because there were so many that I thought sounded really great. So the first book on my list is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Cyril. And so I've read both of her books, The Dinner List and In Five Years. And I just think she, even though I said that I'm not really feeling the heavy reads, I just, for some reason, her books really like grab my heart. And I mean, but, and she has a way of making some it hopeful, but also just like gutting you at the same time. And I will say like, occasionally I need a catharsis and like, just have a, a something that just touches me and I can have a good cry. So I feel like I will save this book for that, that <laughs> purpose. And I will say also her books often have like a magical realism element or some sort, like something that is happening that it seems otherworldly. And so 
this is about a daughter who loses her mother and she was kind of like her rock. And so they had planned this trip of a lifetime to go on this amazing trip. And Katie is the name of the main character. She goes ahead and goes. And when she gets there, her mom appears and she's healthy and she's there. And, you know, I haven't read it, but I just, because I have read her other two books and love them. I just feel like this might be a cathartic read for me. And so when I read the description, I was like, I'm putting that on my list because it doesn't come out till March. And I feel like March will, might be a, a, a good time for me to read that. So, so that is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Cyril. And then my other one is Cinder and Glass by Melissa De La Cruz. So Jen has been talking about fairy tale retellings for a long time. And I hadn't really got, I'd read a few, but I hadn't really gotten into them. But then last year for our 2021 reading challenge, that was one of our categories. And so I read some and I just found that I really enjoyed that nostalgia of revisiting stories that I was familiar with, but like seeing this whole new twist put on them. For our episode last year, I read Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. I adored that book. I thought it was so smart and so, I, I just really loved it. So when I saw Melissa De La Cruz had a another Cinderella retelling coming out in 2022, I was like, that's good. That's one. That's what I want to read. So it's Cinder and Glass. And from what I have read, it is about a, a beautiful young woman who her name is Cinderellen, but they but they call her Cinder. And she meets the prince, but goes to not like him at all. But then there's another guy that she meets that is not who she should be with, but that she falls in love with just reading between the lines. And so there's going to be a love triangle <laughs> and there's going to be this kind of, I envision like kind of fighting the patriarchy, which I'm very into at the moment. So I think that sounds great. And I know I have not read a Melissa De La Cruz book, but I know a lot of people really love her stuff. And I think that this sounds great. And the cover is gorgeous. So I'm really excited about reading this one. And I think that maybe I'll read One Italian Summer and then <laughs> to bring up my spirits, I'll read Cinder and Glass. So that is yeah. Melissa De La Cruz's Cinder and Glass. And I think that it's a Cinderella retelling. That is on my wish list now. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I have the e-galley for one Italian summer. So oh, I have not read it yet. But maybe really you can excited. pre-screen it for me. Yeah. <laughs> I may How need many tears will one. you cry? <laughs> Buckets of tears. Yes. Baths of tears. Yes. <laughs> Well, I hope that you all have enjoyed listening to some of the books we're excited about. If you have some that you are really looking forward to, we would definitely love to hear them because, you know, we are collectors of books on a list. So we will add those books to our list. Uh, before we end, we are going to do Give Me One. And our Give Me One is a series you want to finish but haven't. I feel like my list is really long with this. <laughs> Jen, what is yours? So mine is Neil Schusterman's Ark of a Scythe trilogy. And this is one of those. I have no idea why I have not finished it. It's only a trilogy. I loved the first book. I love Neil Schusterman. But yeah, it's it's like we were talking about before. Sometimes if there's too much distance between the first book and the second book, it's just hard to get the momentum to get back into it. I actually have the second book on my shelf. So there is no reason I should not have read it by now. But I haven't. So that's fine. Ashley, how about you? So yeah, it, it's funny because we wound up talking a lot about series with our picks for 2022. So yeah, I, like you, Sarah, I feel like I have a long list of these, but one that I very much want to read and would love an excuse to push myself to read in 2022 is the Curse Breakers series, Bridget Kimmerer's Curse Breakers series. I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely and absolutely loved it, but I have not read either of the other two. And so I am excited to get back to that series. Yeah. They're really good. What about you, Sarah? What's your pick? So mine is Marie Lou's Legend series. I read the first one actually with a class uh, several years ago and I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was well-paced. It was quick. And I bought 
prodigy and it, I, I'm literally staring at it on my shelf and I just have not gone back to it. So, and I know how much you all adore the series. Mm-hmm. So that's one that has been on my list. I really would like to finish it and there's no excuse as to why I have not, but I haven't. So and there's going to be an adaptation. There's oh, going to be an adaptation. I'm that, so excited. I that's saw even, that article, Jen. That's so exciting. <laughs> and that's even a more push to read it in a timely oh, yeah. fashion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you for listening today. Remember to check out our Give Me One so that you can let us know the series that you want to finish but haven't. And thanks for listening. Do you have comments or opinions about what you heard today? We'd love to hear them. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Unabridged Pod or on the web at unabridgedpod.com for ways to support us. To get more involved, you can sign up for our newsletter, join a buddy read, or become an ambassador. Thanks for listening to Unabridged.